Kirk has taken some time out of his film festival, because I know this guy does the film festival. Some of us get invited to like one party, maybe two. He gets invited to all the parties. Every party I go to, I see Mr. Uh, ben, so. You, you notice he said every party he went to, so these there too. <laughs> I'm going to a couple. <laughs> but Lyric is a very interesting person. We grew up in the same neighborhood of Jaden Finch in Toronto, and uh, we both ended up in television, working yeah. in, in the media, Lyric in movies and on acting in some television shows. So we're just going to talk to him a little bit about his progression through the industry and a little bit about himself because we're here celebrating films and film festivaling in Toronto and we thought that Lyric Bent would be a good person to talk to about that. You guys want to hear what he has to say? Yeah. All you. right. We're going to start from the beginning. I'm going to get comfortable. You comfy? Yeah, I'm good. I'm All good. Right. Warm welcome. I'm good. <laughs> um, I've known this man, I guess, since he was a little kid running around Jaden Finch. I'm a little older than him, but I knew his, his older brother. Yeah. I even know his real name, <laughs> not his movie name. We'll, we'll get into it. We should put that out on, on a trivia later to see if people can figure it out. But, Lyric, let's take it from the beginning. Um, you were born in Jamaica. Yes. And uh, talk about your journey to Canada, first of all. My journey to Canada is almost non-existent because I have really no recollection. I came up when I was six, yep. and um, if, if, if you're not familiar with the Caribbean, as a child, um, you're, you, you speak when spoken to, <laughs> so you don't ask a lot of questions. Um, one day, I just found myself in a very cold place, and I saw snow for the first time, <laughs> and it was at night, and I saw, I saw millions of lights below me when I was in some sort of a vessel, wow. and I, I asked my grandmother, you know, because the only recollection I had with twinkling light was at the back of a helicopter in Jamaica when they would fly by. You see this all red light at the back, the back just yeah. red light. And I saw these lights, white, red, all kinds of lights. I said, Grandma, all those lights, did they fall off the helicopter? <laughs> and she said, she said, boy, stop being silly. <laughs> but this was a kid not knowing what he was experiencing. And so I, I wasn't always comfortable asking questions. So um, the, the journey to Canada was overwhelming, yeah. to say the least. A shock to the system. It was definitely a, a shock to the system. Now, we're going to fill in the middle part in a little bit. But take that little kid getting off yeah. the plane in the strange country yes. to this guy, whenever I call him, yeah. is on a plane going somewhere else. <laughs> Let's get to some of the projects you're going to be working on. I know you're going to be working with Nicolas Cage uh, yes, on please. a movie pretty soon. So yes. we want to talk about that. 12 Monkeys. You guys remember 12 Monkeys? What's yeah. happening with 12 Monkeys? Uh, we, uh, we're doing a series, TV series. Um, it's, our first, it's our first year, so it'll be out in January, February of next year. And um, you'll, be, um, you'll be pleased. Yeah. It's, 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 it's and what kind of character movie. are you playing in that? Well, interestingly enough, they got me playing a doctor. Very no nice. No cops. Yeah. I'm always playing <laughs> yeah, cops. Yeah, I'm playing a lot of cops. <laughs> I don't think you played a cop on CSI, though. Weren't you in trouble on CSI? I, I was in trouble. Yeah, you were in the interrogating room. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I got in a little trouble. But I play a doctor, a doctor from Haiti. Okay. Dr. Henri. And I had to speak some French. I was going to say, do you have to do an accent? Do you have to do some... So they wanted me to speak Creole, uh, French Haitian Creole, Creole, Haitian Creole. Okay. I told them not happening. Yeah. It's not no. that close. I know you can do the Jamaican patois. Well, I could do that. So <laughs> I, I told them, I said, well, the closest I can give you is... Um, is an island sound, okay. but not anything you from know, that specific. Side. Yeah, from the French character. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and in between, I spoke some actual French. Nice. So uh, yeah, maybe it'll be believable. We'll yeah, we're, we're going to look for no, that. It'll, it'll and that's good. coming out in next year, and early next out, year. Yes, early next and year. And how many of you have heard of Aaliyah? Remember the singer Aaliyah? She died really young. What's that project all about? Because yes, there's been rumors a of a long time about a biopic. Yes. Are you involved in that? I, uh, we've, we're finished shooting. Um, wow. It's in the can. They're editing right now. That should be out late this year or early next year. So, um, yeah, the princess of R&B, Aaliyah, I mean, she accomplished so much so quickly. Yes. And um, everyone loves her, and so it's a sensitive subject matter. Yeah, I know and Drake was trying to do some stuff with her music, and people oh. were, there, there was an uproar. They're like, leave her music alone, <laughs> right? Yeah, Drake, Drake wanted to do some stuff with her, uh, with her music, and uh, he's a talented cat, so I, I, I believe whatever he does, it, be it, it'll be good, and, you know, it'll respect her, her legacy. The same way we, you know, made sure we respected her legacy and not to taint 
you know, her image and uh, put anything out there that the public doesn't already know. And we didn't try to capitalize on anything negative. We, we just told a story. Really looking forward yeah. to seeing that. I yeah. was a huge fan of yeah. Aaliyah. And how many people are fans of the great Canadian novel, Book of Negroes? Yes. How many people read the yes. book here, right? <laughs> if you haven't read that book, you have to read that book. It's one of the best Canadian books. And you guys, along with uh, BET in the States and CBC here yes. in Canada, you finished that film now. Yes, we were in uh, we're in South Africa for about four months. South Africa, you shot yeah. shot some in Nova Scotia. Shot a couple months in uh, Nova Scotia. We were actually, you know, we're, we're the, the the black loyalists of Nova yes. Scotia. Uh, they took us in, showed us around, um, explained to us, you know, where things happened, showed us actual burial grounds that are still there. Um, that was interesting. It, it was very interesting, and the way we shot the uh, the, the the show was. Uh, after leaving uh, New York after the, the, the war. Yeah, in the book. We don't want to give away too much for those of you who haven't read yeah, the book, but that's part of much. the story. Yeah. But when, when they were brought to Nova Scotia to colonize, yep. it, 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 colonized, it, was, uh, it was winter. So when we left uh, South Africa, it was beautiful. When we got to Nova <laughs> Scotia, oh And then my you're, gosh. you're on the rock in the winter. It was so cold. <laughs> and we couldn't complain. Well, I didn't complain because I'm thinking... This is how it was for these people. And yeah. they didn't have the parkas and the boots and all this yeah. that I had. And as an actor, I guess it, it could help you. As an actor, it can help you. It doesn't matter if you're method or not. It yeah. helped you because it, it was real. It, it was, you were feeling the elements of what you know, was happening then. So it, it was a great experience. And um, the cast was incredible. Uh, Lou Gossett Jr., who was yes, in Roots, Lou Gossett, is, yep. is in this. Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. So we had oh, two. Oh, Cuba Gooding Jr. in it too. I didn't we realize that. We got two Oscar, you know, wow. worthy characters. And Anjanu uh, Ellis, who played um, Aminata, was incredible, and we had a great time. And Clement Virgo did an excellent job. Yes, another yeah. local guy. Yes, Clement. I Virgo. think a Regent Park kid too. I believe yeah, so. Yeah. I believe so. So th that's what's coming up. But let's talk about some of the things that you're already known for. Mm -hmm. um, we we'll talk about Rookie Blue. Yeah, the rookie. Right, a lot of people will know you from Rookie Brew. You're a sergeant, you staff sergeant? Staff sergeant, Star Frank Sarver. Best. That's it, on that show. Yes. And that's one that ran nationally both in Canada and the U.S. And, the, and still. And, and still, still running, yeah. Yeah, still kicking those numbers. And that's, that's a testament to what's happening in Canada. Yeah. You know, it was long overdue. Uh, there were a lot of things that helped the, the, the process, which, mm -hmm. we, which was necessary. Uh, and I, it all started with SARS, if you all remember SARS. Yeah. And how the industry kind of crumbled and... And, we, you know, I think on a large scale, it, it showed the industry that, you know, if the, if, if the Americans didn't cook, we didn't eat. Yeah. So we had to create for And ourselves. you did your own thing there. Yeah. So now, you know, Canadian cinema is creating its own. And, you know, hats off. Everyone in here should be proud of that yeah. because it's it shot is, here. It, it's shot here. It's Canadian crew. Um, everyone is on is Canadian on the yeah. show. And the quality is on the same level as National American Network TV. in the U.S., right. and it did really well. I remember speaking to you, I think, shortly after, maybe your mm -hmm. second season, and, and you were saying that you were surprised. That I think you went to New Zealand, or you went somewhere else in the world where the show ran, yeah. and you're like, you were getting a lot of love yeah. over there. People yeah. at home were like, is that a Canadian show? Yeah, I don't yeah. know, but you said yeah. when you got to, like, certain places in the world, yeah. you were so surprised at the following that this show had. Huge. And I had no idea it was being sh shown there. Yeah. I didn't know. And so when you, when you get, you know, bombarded by people and you don't know why until they say, oh, Rookie Blue, and you're like, what? <laughs> you guys get Rookie Blue here? Yeah. yeah, and then I found out it's in 90 countries. 90 countries, right, <laughs> produced right here in Toronto. Yeah, so that's incredible. When you and let's about talk it. about your other big project. I think... Uh, this film, probably one of your highest grossing. I think they said it grossed like $100 million. One of the Saw movies. Oh, yeah. And you were, you were the star in, in a... In how so many of the Saw movies were you in? <clears throat> Too much. Uh, <laughs> I, did, I, did, uh, I did three of them. Yes. I did three of them. Uh, I started Saw 2, yep. 3, and I started in the fourth one. This right. You were the star in the and, fourth and one, and which was one of the highest grossing ones. Which was one... Actually, all three of them were the highest grossing. Really? Yeah, they topped each other each year, which Incredible. I would like to It usually doesn't go that way with sequels. It usually goes the opposite way with sequels. It usually yeah. does. And, and, and after, after my last one, yeah, the numbers started dropping a little bit. And know, you weren't there anymore, but we won't say anything. Yeah. But it still did well. They still do well. Um, 
but that was an interesting process. Yeah, what was for it me? like working in that kind of horror genre? Because that's a whole. If you look at the eclectic mix of work mm -hmm. that you've done, yes, you've been lucky enough to not be typecast in any one role. You've been in so many different kind of movies. What was the horror genre, well, genre like? It, it wasn't all luck. To it, it, a lot of it started out with just um, just headstrong. I knew what I wasn't going to do in this business. And um, quickly it showed me that if I wasn't that way, the business would have put me in a box real, real easily. But when, 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 I, uh, when I did the Saw films, it, it was not what I thought it was going to be. It, it, it was very, um, there were a lot of jokers on that show, <laughs> uh, a lot of pranks. So it wasn't like gory and... Oh, you mean they were scaring you behind the scenes? As like you guys yeah, were working in the middle the of a scene, uh, you know, it's a pretty intense scene. I'm looking for my partner, he's missing and... You know, I'm, 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 I'm really trying, you know, to, to, to find this guy. And all of a sudden, I hear, I hear somebody cutting the cheese. And I'm like, oh, no. the director has a fart machine going on. No. In, in the <laughs> to try to keep scene. things light. I try to keep things light, trying to, you know, get everybody. But I thought up. you guys were cutting people up in this movie. Yeah, yeah they were. And you figure, you know, everyone's going to be <laughs> in that headspace and kind of yeah. grossed out. But you got a lot of jokers on that show. Yeah. That, Director Darren Bowsman, he, he's just a big kid, yeah. and it, it's just so hard to keep him contained, you, you know, and um, it, it was great, great experience, and um, I had fun. It was, a, it, was, it was a launching pad. It helped me get to and where I had to very go. Very successful franchise right around yeah. the world. And, and that's what it is. And yeah, you can't sneak at $100 million at the <laughs> box office. You can't sneeze at that. Um, let's talk about how, how you got into this, because acting is a very competitive world, you know? You guys... They always say, if you want to be an actor, you got to be used to rejection because you're going to have going out for all these roles. You're not going to get a lot of roles. And your path to it was almost accidental because you did everything that your parents wanted you to do. You went to school. You got post-secondary education. You graduated, I think, computer graphics or something yeah, like yes, that yes. with honors. And you're on your way. And then all of a sudden, um, somebody dares you to go to an audition. How did that work well, out? No, it wasn't really there. It was more of a challenge. It was like... You know, I was, I was strapped for money, you know, and, you know, coming from a, a hustling mentality, yep. I had to focus on now doing the school thing and, you know, paying my way through school and lost my job, uh, you know. And so I started going door to door selling long distance phone service. Wow. And uh, that in itself was um, Humbling. interesting. <laughs> Well, very much so because, you know, coming out of Jane and Finch, my circle was about this big and yeah. I, never, I never left it. Why would I? I didn't know anything else, right? Mm -hmm. So when I had to come downtown, it was my first time going into downtown at the age of 19. Wow. You know, I, yeah. it was, it was, I, remember, I remember getting a map and calling people up trying to figure out how to get downtown from <laughs> Jane and Finch. <laughs> and so I had to go out of, you know, my comfort zone and I thought, oh, my gosh. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to encounter white folks and they might they might have a problem with me, <laughs> you know. I might like why are you at my door, uh, kid? Yeah, what I'm do not, you want? I'm not here to rob you. I just want to sell you some long distance. <laughs> you know. So that was my concern. I really thought I was gonna be rejected. Yeah, yeah. You know. So I was really nervous. You know. But it was it was a it was a good opportunity to yeah, make some good money. Practice your public speaking. Yeah, you oh, have yeah. to. I was gonna do a lot of that. So uh, yeah, practice my public speaking. But long story short, it was the total opposite. It was like, oh, how you doing, young yeah. man? It was always these <laughs> older Caucasian women. Yeah. Like, You're a good-looking young man. <laughs> are, you, are you a model? Do you act? You look familiar. I used to get that every day. I used to get so that So that that plant to see that, hey. And, and a co then the co-worker <laughs> said to me, he's like, you know, Lyric, you, you, you should look into that because he was a wannabe actor. And he uh, wanted to get in. And he was like, I wish I got that type of. You know, yeah, come. reaction from people. And uh, he basically said, if I, if I make more money than you today, you're going to go see this acting coach that I go to. And that's what it was. And he came in, and you got to ring this bell when you make a certain amount of money. Guy comes in and rings a bell. <laughs> and and like, it's like, you're going to go see that acting uh, coach. And the next day, he brought that card, and another coworker, Jason, says, you know, Lyric, I've always wanted to be an actor. Let's go. We went down together, and... Um, saw this acting coach, and that's the rest of it. And he's still my coach to today. Still your coach. He's still my coach. Now, th there's an interesting story with your, with your mom, though, mm. because, you know, you have these West Indian parents, and, you know, we're all scared of our moms in the West Indies, really. We are so... I still, when I answer my mom to this day, I can't say yes or no. I no. still have to say yes, ma'am. No, no, mom. I say, I, say, I say yes, mommy. Yeah, right? I'm serious. Like, you can't just say yes, right? I, yeah, I still call my mom mommy. So, 
Yeah. I still me do. Me too, me too. And, and your mom now was a little upset with you with yeah. this acting thing. Not because she was afraid uh, of your success, no, but, let me but how it. she found out. Uh, come on, don't set me up like that. Come on. <laughs> no, it was tough. Like, so I'm doing this acting thing. Yeah. Um, things started to happen. I was, I was doing maybe some, some commercials. Or one You're on TV. Doing, on TV. And my mom's at work, and she, I've never explained it to them that I was doing this acting thing. I just, I was just doing it. You know, it's pretty much on my own as a young age. You kind of yeah. like... You're independent. Often, independent. Yeah. And independently, I was acting. And uh, a coworker told her that they saw me on TV, and that's how she found so, out. Hey, I, I saw your son on TV. TV. She goes, my son? And, yeah, no, 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 no. It could yeah, be my son. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And she's like, what? No, you couldn't have seen him on TV. What, what's he doing on TV? Because she's thinking he's on the 6 o'clock news. He's in trouble. He's on the 6 o'clock <laughs> news. And, and, and so, she, and so she, she told me, she's like, you know, um... Philippe told me he saw you on TV. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did this thing. And she told me, she told me how hurt she was to, to have somebody tell her that. And that's the first time that, you know, my mom was, I felt, you know, emotional yeah. about something that, you know, involved me. And I just never saw her as that because she was also such a strong woman, yeah. you know, five kids. And, yeah, raising you them know, and working, and yeah. So it was just, it was, that's the first time I saw my mom as, oh, She's a human being. She's a person. <laughs> it's not Supermom. Right. You know? Right. She's it's not, not the really. warden. Man. Yeah, it's like, exactly. So I, I, I had no idea that I could hurt my mom like that. By but not I, I, would, her I would guess that it has come full circle and she's extremely proud oh my goodness, of your yes. success oh, now. Yeah, and yeah. carries your picture around and said, Oh, yeah, that guy on TV, that's my son. <laughs> I brought it to TIFF last year when I had Home Again in, in, in the yes, film premiere. Festival. You've had a couple of films premiere here yeah. at TIFF, yep. And uh, so I brought them to the premiere and everything, and oh my goodness, I, I, her face was stuck like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it was fun. You, you know. know, we always tell people, you know, uh, a lot of, Toronto's filled with a lot of people who have immigrated here from all over the world, mm -hmm. and one of the proudest things for them is that they come here so our kids, you know, their kids can have the opportunity yes. to do what you're doing. Better right? life, better life, no matter yeah. how, uh, how you find it, just better than what it was. Just the, the opportunity to do it, and you're out there taking advantage of it. We're going to take some questions from, from you guys in a minute. I do want to talk to you about growing up in Jane and Finch, yeah. you know, and I, I also grew up there. I, I lived in 1825 Finch. He lived in what we called Yellowstone, yes. which is right next door. Yes. Yeah, that's and, his building. This is and my that's, project. That's his spot right there. Literally. And what's, and what's incredible about it is that out of that little corner, maybe from here to there, mm -hmm. uh, Julie Black, the singer, mm -hmm. also might... came out of there, and you guys would have been in school oh, together. Yeah, 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 this, we have um, Louis Ferrara, who's also known as Justin Lewis, another Jane and Finch kid who's doing yeah. really well yeah. as, an, as an actor. actor. Mm -hmm. uh, Luther Brown, yes. who is a choreographer. choreographer on So You Think You Can Dance. Yes. And you guys, I used to see you guys hanging out at the back of my building oh, yeah, there. Yeah. Actually, you guys he, was, he did the choreography for um, Aaliyah. For Aaliyah too, Aaliyah that's Project right, and he does did. the Jay Z videos. Yeah, so it was great that we just saw each other. What do you think it is? Was there something in the water that this little neighborhood little in Toronto corner. that's known for really negative things has been able to produce a lot of really positive people that well, are doing some incredible things? A lot things. of positivity coming out of Jane and Finch. It's just unfortunately, you know, the negative news sells a lot, you know, yep. easier. But um, Jane and Finch to me, it's. It's the world I lived in, so I didn't know anything else. I didn't have anything to compare it with, so I didn't think I grew up in a bad area. And you know, a lot of times I, I'm in interviews and people say, "Well, how was it like growing up in Jane and Finch?" And I'm like, "Man, it was great. <laughs> it was great." You know, we actually uh, had a good time. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a product of the environment, yes. and we're here having an interview. If I'm a good thing, I guess Jane and Finch is a good Jane thing. Jane and Finch is not a bad thing. I mean, at all. It, it, no matter where you are depending on who you are and what it is that you're all about. And sometimes your environment does and can influence you, but you have your own mind. And depending on, I guess, the individual, you decide if you're going to follow the bandwagon or if you're going to do you. And, and that was it. Not and that was it. those bad examples. And, and, living, and, and being afraid of mom, too. Yeah, and being afraid of mom. <laughs> you know, you, you always have to have foundation of, you know, some sort of fear. And, you know, my parents, I, I, I was afraid of my parents and yep. you know doing something wrong and then having them find out so you know you got to put that fear in your kids however you do it you make sure that you know they they survive through it and it helps them and it brings them through life i'm telling you so uh jane and finch was a, it was a, it was adventure it was an adventure man yeah, i mean I it, it was it was a great environment and we, always outside always playing always running around you know a lot so of basketball a lot of basketball <laughs> so 
you know, it, it, I had a great time. Yeah. I had a great and time. You, and you are now a, a shining example, a real beacon for the young people in that neighborhood. And, and we're really proud of you. Thank like you we very are, much. As a Jane and Finch and myself, I, we're really, really proud well, of your it, success. Dude, we're proud of you too, and, man. And, We've and been what seeing you, you represent. For a while. I tweeted out a, a picture today, and it was so <laughs> strange. It was about 10 <laughs> years ago. We were at a wedding in Jamaica, and we yeah. were bookending yes. these guys. And, and oh. in the middle of the picture, I think, is Lennox Lewis, the yes. world championship boxer, yeah. Donovan Bailey, yes. and another. Um, Mark. Mark, yes, Mark that's Poiser. right. Is, is he acting too? Mark Poiser, he, he actually just finished a film um, called The Last King. Um, it's okay. a, it's like a Bollywood type film, which I, 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 I'm so jealous of him because I've, I've always wanted to get into Do Bollywood. Do like a Bollywood type film. But uh, yeah, so I'm so glad that he was able to get that project. And I remember him. I remember him yeah. dunking on me as a kid. That's what <laughs> I remember Mark from. I don't know how much time we have, but I do want to try to get you guys in on the conversation if anybody has any questions yes, for please. Mr. Lyric Yes, please. Ask questions and don't be shy. <laughs> don't be Canadian shy. Yeah, don't be Canadian shy. Now, this, 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 you got a question. I know you got a question. No, everybody's being shy. <laughs> anybody have a question? Okay, good. Hey, Jen, can I get you to take some pictures and tweet out here for me, please? Thank you very much. Where am I going? You right here, sir? So what, what project that you've worked on have you enjoyed the most like as a fan? Not while you're working on it, but afterwards. Afterwards. Um, that's a good one. Um, I, thought, I thought it was, um, up until last year, it was Home Again. Okay. Because that film was pretty Tatiana much my Ali life. Tatiana was in that movie Tatiana too. From, remember Ali. her from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Yeah. yeah, Tatiana uh, was in that. And it was about deportation. It was about leaving your country uh, of birth, coming to another country for a better life, and then finding yourself in, in problems with the law and then being deported back home after 21 not years. So you got to call this place home. And that could have been my story. Yeah. You know, I, left, you when, I left when I was a kid, grew up in Canada, and uh, if I wasn't a citizen and I got in some kind of problem, you got deported. And this is the reality of so many people who come here. And this country has been made up of immigrants in the U.S., the U.K. And uh, you follow the story of these three lives. And so I thought, wow, this is a story I need to tell because it was so close to me. And uh, there are so many people that I knew that got in situations like that. And that was my favorite project until I did the Book of Negroes. Until you did which one? The Book of Negroes. Book of Negroes, yeah. Um, that is... I'm you, looking you, forward you to that. You all haven't seen it yet, but... Yeah, we're oh going to be talking goodness. about yeah. a lot about the Book of Negroes here at CBC because we're going to be showing it along with yeah. an American broadcasters, And I'm hoping to bring Lyric back to Jane and Finch to do something with the kids in the neighborhood as that movie is going to premiere. So yeah, we're looking forward to that. What's interesting, too, though, is that the producer... We keep talking about these troubled communities in um, the city, and you work with... Um, Clement Virgo, who was yes. a Regent Park kid, and Sud Sutherland yes. on Home Again, who was a Malvern kid. Yes. So that's pretty yes. interesting. Anybody else? Okay. As a, youth, oh, as a youth growing up in Toronto, who was your biggest influencer? Wow. You know, um, I, 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 have to, I have to really say it, it, was, it, was, it was like an, uh, from the inside out. It started at home with my parents telling me I could do anything I want to do, even though they had no idea what it is that... I imagined to do. They just thought it was all about school, get an education, which is great. I, I think you need to have that because it teaches you it teaches you discipline. It teaches you to be able to accomplish something within a certain period of time. And that is something that every child should understand. And if it comes to education, so be it. But then my community, the people around me, the older the older guys who I saw doing things other than getting into trouble, playing basketball, like Dwight said, um, it, it really was my community. I, I, I didn't grow up with TV. You know, there was one TV. Guess who watches it? Dad. Right? <laughs> so, so I didn't grow up with TV. I didn't get to watch TV and admire. And so I was never in the house. I was always outside. So it was always my community and the people around me. And I always sought out people like a Dwight and, 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 and other people who kind of did their own thing. For some reason, they just seemed like leaders that did their own thing. And it was always odd because it was different, you know? And... Uh, you just pick up on these things, you know, guys like Luther, you know, he always did something that was a little off, off yeah. you know, what do you mean you choreographing a dance move? To and who one, would think you that know? you turn on so you think you can dance, and yeah. I'm like, isn't that Mary, isn't that Luther? Yeah. <laughs> it's not Luther. The first time I saw him on TV, I, I was like, crazy. Said, okay. 
like, when so, did he do that? And I'm like, oh, now I got what my mom was saying when I didn't tell her. Because yeah. I didn't know he was into all of that. No. I just saw him on TV. I remember he had a little dance crew in the neighborhood called the Do That the Dancers. Do that dances. That's that used right. to dance at Jane Finch Mall yeah, all the time. Exactly. But that's interesting that, that you did it. And, and I was the same way that we often looked up to guys like George McNeil, who's a McNeil. good buddy of yours. Talk about a And that was leader. my first coach. And, yeah. you know, I always say, if you pick the right guys in the neighborhood to follow, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Right? If you just pick the, you look around, and, and growing up, you, you want to be a rapper. Yes. You want baller. to be a professional athlete. Yeah. And your parents want you to go to school, go right? To school. So we fit the yeah. stereotype there. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the actors that you've worked with that you uh -huh. really admire. Because you've worked with a lot of big names yeah. in this business. Tell us about some of the people you've, you've had the pleasure of working well, with. Um, uh, when I first started out, this is, uh, I was just getting in the game. And... Um, there's a movie called Hurricane with Denzel Washington. Yes, that was shot here. And I, uh, I got a little bit part in that and, and in the beginning, and then it became where I was just there every day, kind of like a workout buddy. So with you Denzel. got to meet Denzel? Oh, yeah. Before we... you became Canada's Denzel? <laughs> right? Right? No, we worked out, and I remember asking him, I, I said, you know, Denzel, like, you're never in the tabloids, man. Like, how do you, how do, you do what you do? And he said, um, you, you, you see that? That moment just there, because a young lady wanted to, you know, talk to him. He was talking to him. We were in a nightclub or whatever. And he said, what did you notice? I was like, you were animated. You were nice. But he's like, yeah, but you noticed that I always made sure that there was daylight between me and her and that my hands were in my pocket so yeah. that no one could ever say anything about my behavior. Or, you know, he was always alert yeah. with his conscious surroundings. Of what was conscious of yeah. what, who he was and what it could be if one word to say anything yeah, so he so, so that that was great uh working with lou gossett yes um I've, I've known lou through charity work that i do but we've never worked together and uh, when we uh did book of negroes he came out to south africa and man the stories that guy has to tell and the the knowledge that he shared with me for, with this yes. business and how to conduct myself. Yeah, he and got one for an uh, officer and a gentleman. Yeah, officer and a gentleman. He got an award for that you one know? too, right? So, he got an yeah. Academy Award for that. So that was uh, so that was you know great. And then Cuba, you know, yeah. he, he, him being another <laughs> award winner, you know, teaching me and sharing with me what you know he's done. Um, yeah, he's got that. Show me the money. Show That's me a the famous money. slide of the movie there. <laughs> Um, Wahlbergs, you know, Donnie. Yeah, you got to work with the Wahlbergs, Mark, too. That's you know, right. You know, the, those guys are... Is that film out yet that you did with them? You uh, did a film with them. The, the one I did with... Oh, those... Man, oh, the old films, man. Yeah, the one I did with Mark was uh, Four Brothers. That's it, Four Brothers. Four Brothers. Yes, that's the um, one, yeah. Yeah, and, um, you know, Guy's Guy. That that show had all the testosterone on that show. <laughs> I mean, you had Andre 3000. You had Tyrese. You had... Oh my gosh. Haven't you worked with Tay Diggs too? I worked with Tay Diggs yeah. on um, uh, Kevin Hill TV show. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember these things. You've been doing a lot of work, just, a lot just, of work. It's all about the it's work. It's good when you're an actor. Because I remember in my drama class in, in high school, I said, you know, maybe I want to be an actor, miss. And she said, you know how to wash dishes, Dwight? Because you may be washing some dishes if it doesn't work out. Any other questions? I thought somebody else here had a question. Did I see somebody else? No? All right, let's talk about the recognition factor because a lot of actors and artists in general complain about how hard it is in Canada. They feel like, you know, it's not until you cross the border yeah. and, and get success there before we really appreciate you here at home as one of our own. Do you feel a little bit of that, that, that it takes almost U.S. success before they, they know who you are well, here? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the tail end of that truth. You know, um, it, it is very true. Um, for what reason, I don't know, but it just seems to be consistently true. Um, I, I moved to, to, to L.A. in 05. Yep. Um, this is after years of, you know, padding the resume, working, and realizing that I had to make the move, the, the move eventually because the work that's being given here for an actor is very limiting. Um, original content isn't being made here, and if it is, chances are I don't, I'm not in it. You know, th there's not a character there for me to play. So um, most of my work up until the, the time I left was American work that was really? shooting here, right? Okay. And so I, I was, I was, I don't know why, but I was always vigilant that I, I'm, going, I'm doing film. I'm not going to mess with TV because there weren't a lot of TV shows coming here. And the TV shows here was usually Canadian and it wasn't getting the exposure. So I focused on film, which made it harder because there were fewer, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And that means if there was a quarter of the pie to get, I was maybe getting a sliver that I could see through. And so I felt that was a route to take anyway. I just went and, and it, and it kind of worked because yeah, then when I moved to the, to the U.S., they see my resume, they identify with the work that I've done because some of them casted those, but they don't know me. And I'm like, what, you, how, why don't I know you? You've done, you worked with so-and-so, you've done this, you've done that, they see my, my trailer, my, uh, my um, demo reel, why don't I know you? And that's what they love, you know, what I love about America, they want to discover you. And so everyone then jumped on my bandwagon because obviously this kid has something and I don't know him, but I'm going to let the world know him. So things started to go from there. And I mean, you seem like you're, you're working steady because every time I hear you, you're on another project, one to the other, one to the other. And you have to do that because a, 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 an actor's ex, uh, attention span is so short. You have you know? a window. Yeah, and, and you, you always want to stay busy because this, this is what we love. We love doing this. And you're going to stick to do both doing film and TV to film, this Film, TV, and there was a time when TV wasn't popular. Now It's TV's, coming back. It, it's, it's back. It's here. And now the A-listers are just taking everything. <laughs> um, but, it, but that's the business it, it constantly pushes you to reinvent yourself right. and um, I, I'm, I'm loving the process it's, it's, it's difficult if you yeah. think about it I don't think about it I just be about it and live it because it is really overwhelming if you think about it when you look at the numbers and where you fit and blah, it's overwhelming just be prepared, be ready and just be vigilant and that's what I... I continue to do and maybe that's why it's happening because I don't know why continued success yeah. I know you guys want to get some pictures and stuff after um, you know what this this has been just a real treasure you guys have fun today yeah. you know it is um, it, it's so important that we we support our artists it's so important that we appreciate them so that America doesn't steal them from us. And they will. They will. They, they really will. will. This, is, this is a hometown kid that's just, you know, I, I was flipping around one day, and I, I flipped it, I'm going by CSI, and I'm like, who's that in the interrogation room? Isn't that, isn't that Ben? I called some of my friends. I said, yo, yo, put it on Channel 8. Channel, look, look, look. It just, it's just really cool to see you up there on the big screen. Yeah. You know, it's so bad. I, I went to the patty shop the other day, and they're bootlegging your movie. I'm like, hey. That's my buddy, man. Don't boot like that. You guys well, got to buy that. Well, you know you, have, you, you know you haven't made it unless you, until you're bootlegged. I was like, yo, they got lyric <laughs> up there. Yeah, I'm like, so really proud of you. So, thank you so much for making time for us. And I hope you'll hang around so the folks yeah, can come sure, and meet sure. you. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much, Lyric. Lyric sure. Band, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.